Welcome to another one of my silly videos. In this one, we're going to introduce RPG to the complete beginner and do some code samples. Let's have a look. Well, it's a new day and it's time for a new video and a giant green screen. <laughs> Telnet 5250. Uh, it's been a long time since I've recorded a, a, any form of IBMI training video for the website, so I think it's time to record a quick get down and dirty, absolute basics, uh, a hello world RPG program, report program generator for IBM I, previously I series, previously AS400, arguably previously System 38. So RPG from that's gone from RPG three column based. Perhaps we'll do a dis, we'll do a, a simple hello world in RPG three. RPG 400, column based. Then we can uplift it to RPG uh, free format. Then we can put it in modern RPG and add some variables. How about that? Okay, so here we are starting. I'm gonna do all of this in green screen and then I'll show you the same thing using Visual Studio Code. But for right now, here we are, signed on to a glorious IBM I system out there in the cloud. This is my one. So let's have a look. I've literally just set this machine up yesterday, so uh, there's nothing on it. So if I look at my work library called Nlitten, all I've got in here is a bunch of things I backed up from my old system and restored. So let me start off by, if we're going to take it right from the basics, we're going to do this in a source file. I could equally do this source in IFS, but for right now, as you're a complete noob, I'm assuming, um, and you just want to write a an RPG Hello World program. What we'll start off with is we'll write the source. We'll use the very basic uh, green screen text editor. So it's like Notepad in the Windows world. Um, it's called SEU, which stands for, I believe, Source Editing Utility or Stone Age Editing Utility, as I like to call it. Um, and there's a number of ways of getting into it. We can go in direct using Start SEU. And Start SEU says, What's the source file, the library, and the source member that you want to start doing it with? So I'm going to put the source in a file called qrpgle source in the IBM world. Anything you be you see beginning with the letter Q means it's an IBM created object. So of course, me as a programmer or any user, we I shouldn't be creating things called Q anything. And if you see a developer that's creating an object beginning with Q, give them a smack and say, "Oi." If you put a Q in the front, that means it's IBM. You shouldn't be doing it that way. So I'm going to use the existing IBM created RPG ILE source file called QRPG LE source. That happens to exist in my work library in Litten. And we're going to create a new one called, ah, hello. Let's call it hello world. For some reason, I'm all fingers and thumbs today. So excuse my terrible typing. Uh, what's the source type? I'm going to make it RPG LE. It could equally be RPG. If it's the old RPG, that means the old original version of RPG. In fact, let's do it as an original. We'll do all of it. Okay. Let's do an RPG. The old original RPG, which is dates right back to AS400 days, 20 years ago. You had things like a maximum of 16 character field names. Uh, six character field names. And um, the source entry values were much narrower. They were all done column-based. When ILE came out, uh, round about 2000, late 90s, early 1000s, um, when ILE came out, field names increased, so variable names. We no longer had a six-character constraint. We had a 10-character constraint. So as a result, the source entry fields, the screen that you worked with, kind of got busier. Let me get rid of my email notifications. So let's do... the our first ever really basic RPG program, just written in RPG. And we're gonna call this a uh, really basic RPG, hello world, gubbins. In fact, why don't I call it hello one? And then we can upgrade each version and make a hello one, hello two, hello three, etc. okay? So if I'm gonna create a SEU member called hello one, here I am, this is SEU, it's not very, exciting okay what it tells me is because it's expecting the first specification to be an h specification the original rpg had a number of specifications because it's code based h would define um 
the runtime attributes of the program. F would the F specs would define the files that are used in the program. The I specs would define the uh, input values that are coming in from those files to the program. The C specs are the calculation specs where you would do all of your logic. The O specs are the output specs where you'd write to files or write to any other devices. And there's many and many other more specifications. So when you look at your column-based code, you can see exactly what it is. What we're going to do is we're going to do something very, very basic. Um, I'm going to put a comment in first, which is always preceded by an asterisk in the column after the specification. Uh, we'll just call this uh, sample hello world program. Ooh, I, t I told you I couldn't type today. I'm going to try not to edit any of this out as well. See how that goes. Should be fun. Um, and it's me. I don't know what you put in your program comments. I tend to do like a little overview. I put my name in as the author. The date coded. Where are we? We're March uh, 5th, 2024. How on earth did we get to 2024? Good God. Um, yeah, that, that's it. Let me just press enter. Bing! What happened here? This is SEU, right? So SEU has quite happily accepted my comments. You can see at the top here. And it hates this line. It's all gone reverse image. Why is that, I hear you ask? That's because it's not a particular line. It hasn't got a specification. It doesn't know what it is. So just for clarity, to make it obvious to you, I'm going to delete this line. Here we are. SEU is happy again. It knows this is a program with three comments in it. So let's insert a line. You do an I in um, SEU. I'm going to say I want to prompt this line and I want it to be a C spec. <laughs> Horrible, isn't it? So what it does is this is formatting a control specification line, but it's um, showing me the fields on the screen. So let's say that I wanted to use the display keyword. All the display does is it sticks a message onto the screen in the most simple way. When I press enter, it comes up saying, hang on, what are you trying to display? So factor one, you can press F1 on all of these fields that we're playing in, right? F1 gives you some help text. So factor one, because I was in the F1 field when I, because I was in the factor one field when I pressed F1, Type a symbolic name or literal in this field or the actual data to which an operation is to be done. So I'm going to make this one really, really simple, right? I'm just going to say hello. Wow, it's accepted it. If I put my cursor over this C spec line and press F4, that prompts up the line. That's my function in this program. Hello. Display it to the screen. Um, and now I want to tell the program to end. There's two ways of doing this, right? If I just insert, it's just going to insert a blank line. Notice it positions the cursor at the spec to say, what is it that you're trying to insert here? If I did an IP, this says, insert a line and prompt me up. Because I'm already on a C spec, it will decide the next line is a C spec and it will prompt it up for me. Okay, so now what do I want to do? There's two ways of ending a program. There is... In RPG, if you set on an indicator, you're going to have to be familiar with indicators, 01 to 99. They're just Boolean switches that you turn on and off. So you could turn on indicator 60, and then later on the code, you could say, if indicator 60 is turned on, do something. Or I could read a file, and I could say, um, if there's nothing in the file, turn on indicator 22. So then later in the code, if I want to find out if earlier on when I read that file, there was anything that I read, I could say, if 22 is off, then I read something. Otherwise, if 22 is on, display message, customer information not found on file or something like that. And there are some special indicators, level indicators, matching records indicators, halt indicators, all kinds of special things which we'll go into another time. For right now, it's the last record indicator, asterisk in LR. So I could say set on and this high, low, equal, that's that's uh, a record position. I could say set on LR. You'll see this a lot if you look in old code. The LR, um, or a more modern way of saying that, would be to um, move 
on into asterisk in LR. LR just means the last record indicator dating right back to the early days of RPG when it was logic cycle based. It would read through a file, processing, processing, processing. And when it read the last row in that file, the last record of the file, this indicator LR would come on, which would cause the program log logic to read, 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 read. LR's on, read, end. So even in modern day, we still have this. Another very common alternative that you'll see is, whoops, spelt it wrong, return. Notice again, we've only got these six, uh, five character opcodes in original RPG. This expands as we go into the next version. The difference between set on LR and return is set on LR will completely close a program down so that the next time you call that program, it starts afresh and carries on. However, return says end the program right now, but leave it in memory. So let's say you had a program running and um, it had read halfway through a file and then returned. When you call that program again and say continue reading, it would continue reading from that halfway point. If it had read halfway through a file and then done a set on LR, completely closed down. When you call that program again, it's going to start from the beginning and read all the way through again. That's the difference. So there's two schools of thought about which you like. Uh, the modern school of thought tends to be return. So for this example, we're just going to return. The difference being, of course, let's say this hello display, I'd put hello into a variable. When I call the program, because it's still in memory, that variable would still be there. But let's just keep it really simple. This is the most simple program I can think of. A program called hello1. It lives in my work library. Let's see what it does. I've just got three comments, display hello on the screen, and then return. I press F3 to finish. It comes up saying, right, are you really sure? Do you want to save all this stuff? I say yes. And it's created it. So let's create an RPG program. It says, what do you want to call it? I'm going to call it hello1. I'm going to put it into my library. It lives in QRPG LE source in my library. And that's it. I'll press enter. Program hello1 is placed in library and litten. Now, Let's execute that program. I'll just do a call. I'm going to qualify it and litten. I'm going to call it hello one. If you want to see that prompted up, I'll press F4. This is literally all I'm doing is just calling it. Let's see what happens when I press enter. Cool. Something happened, but it was really, really quick, right? And that's because what the display keyword doing is what the display keyword is doing is just writing to the screen. So let me display my job log. Going to press F10 to display detailed messages. I'm going to page up to see what just happened. Oh, look, here's my program running and running the display hello. A neat little trick that programmers do all the time, rather than running from the menus, we go from a place called Q command. So if I call Q command, this gives me a command entry screen. This is much more like a, um, a terminal mode in Windows. And what I can do is I can press F10 to include detailed messages so that now whenever I call a program, if I just call in Linton, hello one, you notice that it ran and I actually see the results of what it did rather than having to look in my job log every time. Now it actually flashed up on the screen briefly, right? Because it literally just said display. It wasn't waiting a response from me. So if, for example, I hadn't done a return, or if I did that display a hundred times, you would have seen a hundred lines of text appearing on the screen before it ended. But there you go. That is, I'm going to press F9 and pull all the way back to that display SEU. That's just about the most basic RPG program you can create. Okay, that was a lot of waffle for me to do a two-line program. So I'm going to end this video here and then we'll jump straight back in and make it a bit more interesting. So I'll see you in a second.